Hey there and welcome to today's Card Academy lesson. I do have to apologize from the start if I seem a little bit down. It's because I've been dealing with a little bit of a migraine all day. It seems to run in my family to get these uh, crippling, debilitating migraines that you really don't want to deal with. But today I'm going to show you guys a little bit of an interesting force from Hillard's Greater Magic. Now this one is akin to the idea of a thinker card. Now you're going to see a similarity to this to the spread force that I've taught many times. That's pretty much my favorite technique, I guess, with cards or my favorite technique ever uh, in magic in general. But this one is an actual psychological force using the same mechanics as the spread force. Now the spread force that I've taught before is uh, based on the idea of timing and having the spectator call stop on the appropriate spot. Whereas this is more of an actual psychological force akin to this classic one that you may have seen uh, from David Blaine's early street magic specials. However, what this one does is that this allows a spectator to generally have a psychological force of a playing card. So in this particular case, you spread through the cards and you tell the spectator, I have a bunch of cards here. I just want you to think of one that stands out to you. And of course, in that particular instance, we're trying to force the uh, four of spades. So we're going to go over the mechanics of this. We're going to go over the verbiage, the wording, uh, different types of wording, and also outs, because outs are probably going to be the most important thing to this particular force, because it's not going to hit sometimes. So you need to know what happens in case you are um, up a paddle, up a creek without a paddle. Up a paddle without a creek, I think would be more uh, substantial. So first things first, you're going to have to have a force card. So let's just say the force card is going to be in the bottom of the deck. In this case, it's going to be the queen of clubs. You're simply going to cut this card into the middle, and this is going to be the starting position. Now you're going to have to time it directly. This is going to vary on person to person on how you cut the card or how deep you, card to, uh, you cut the card into the deck. It's going to depend on your own personal preference and what you're going to say. Now, personally, I like to go for the verbiage of I have a bunch of cards here. It's a normal deck. I just want you to think of one that you could remember. You got one? That's the verbiage that I like to use because it seems non-confrontational and this entire spread of the first half of the deck is taken up by the instruction or by the uh, statement of me saying, here are a bunch of cards. You shuffle the deck, but I just want you to think of a card that stands out to you. You got one? Perfect. Keep that card in mind. That's the way that I would uh, break that down. So let's see how we could get this here. The card's going to be on the bottom of the deck. You're going to have to peek at it beforehand. So you, you need advanced knowledge of this card. Very easily done by an all around glimpse or one of the many glimpses we've talked about on the Academy. That card is going to get cut in the middle. I like to cut it directly center just because that's my, uh, my preference here. You're going to keep a break. You're going to hold the deck to the spectator with the uh, bottom cards facing them like this. You're going to spread through the cards. And again, the timing here is we have a bunch of cards here. You mix the deck. What I want you to do is think of a card that you could remember. You got one? Perfect. Now, in this particular case, all I'm doing is that I'm holding this card here a little bit extra. I'm not making a huge point of it. I'm not making it a, uh, a really nice, neat, tight spread. I'm making it kind of a messy situation. So it just looks like that card happens to be um, just there messily in the spread. Now, the wording is very important because I'm asking them to think of a card that they could remember. Now, usually they're not paying attention to the cards apart from the one that they could see, which happens to be this card over here. So let me just look at the monitor here real quick just to uh, ascertain the timing. I'm going to spread through these cards. You actually mix a deck, but I just want you to think of a card that you could remember. You got one? Perfect. Now, don't go for the bottom one. That's something you also might want to state because sometimes they go for the bottom one uh, just for the sake of uh, trying to catch you out. But in this case, most of the time, they're going to go for that psychological force. Now, of course, the wording that I used is wording that I'm comfortable with. So you're going to need to find the wording that you're comfortable with. It's always important to kind of establish yourself whenever you see an effect either presented uh, in this means and video means. Uh, usually with books is not an issue, but when it comes to this sort of media, you always want to find the words that fit you. You don't want to copy me just because it works for me because again, what works for me might not necessarily work for you. So you need to find your own words and what you feel comfortable with saying while you're spreading the cards that doesn't make the spectator on edge or feel like they're being influenced by some you know weird psychological aspect when they actually are. Uh, there's a couple of different ways to approach this as well. Danny D'Artiz is one that has a very, very bold approach to this where, for example, if he's trying to force the two of spades or just say, oh, the card's right here. Think of one. Got one? Perfect. Okay, just think that card in your mind. And uh, from there, he moves on. He's very, very bold with his approach. And he just pretty much blatantly shows a card that he wants him to think of in an offbeat. So he'll create an offbeat either after a different effect or he'll just create an off beat during a, a performance and he'll just interject that and have the spectator think of a card, then later come back and say, you just think card, you just think of a card. 
Obviously, the mistake that most people make is uh, copying his uh, mutilated English. But again, that's where you take in your own comfort and your own verbiage and incorporate it to try to make it something natural. Uh, now, as far as the actual technique itself, again, it's as simple as it could be. You're peeking at a card. You are cutting it into the middle. You are spreading through. All I'm going to do is that I'm spreading through. I'm not trying to stop on any particular card apart from this card over here. Now, if you notice, I did break from that sometimes when I'm showing cards like this. However, the last card that I show right as I make the, the actual instruction to think of a card that you could remember is the force card. That's going to be very important because we're trying to take advantage of something known as the recency effect. Now, the recency effect is a uh, psychological term that refers to you more likely than not thinking of either the first item on a list or the last item on a list. Now, the recency effect is in regards to the last thing because it's the most recent thing you've heard which is the last thing on a list. The primacy effect, which is the uh, opposite of that, is coerce the first thing that you've heard on a list. So if you list off uh, an, a list of five things, usually if you are part of the primacy effect, you are gonna think of the first thing. If you are akin to the recency effect, we are going to remember the last thing. So in this case, we're trying to play up on that recency effect and trying for our instruction to land when you say, I want you to remember a card that you could see. So that's where uh, the technique actually comes into for this particular force. So the technique is very, very easy. It's just going to require a little bit of practice to make sure that you get your timing correct. Now, this is different than the spread force because if you remember uh, the actual spread force, what you're doing is that you are trying to conspire so that when the spectator calls stop, you are at or near the spot that you want them to call stop at. Here, you want them to do that mentally, essentially, and there's no indication of where the spectator is gonna stop. However, you are pushing them to that point where uh, you want them to stop mentally at the card that you want them to think at. Now, again, this is not gonna hit 100% of the time. Uh, sometimes you could get a really high rate with this. You could get a 90% chance, you could get an 80% chance just because of the wording that you use. You're not saying, uh, think, any, uh, think of any card in the deck. You're saying, think of a card you could remember that's that's a very important distinction and uh, later on you could rewrite history by just simply saying you know you could have thought of any card in a deck which technically is true they could have thought of any card in a deck uh, but really you thought of this card so you could rewrite history later but in the moment think of a card you could remember is usually what I like to go with now what happens when it goes wrong now in this case it's as simple as uh, going over a Top change. That's pretty much the uh, the standard when it comes to these particular techniques. Now, after the force, what I would typically do, let's say I decide to um, tell the spectator again, you can mix this deck. I just want you to think of a card you could remember. You got one, perfect. Uh, let me see if I can look at you here. Let me see if I could uh, ascertain what card you were thinking of. This is my card. All right, I want you to go ahead and uh, just name it for the first time for everybody here. They say the card, let's say it doesn't happen to be the two of hearts and it happens to be, I don't know, the four of hearts. What I do is that at this point, again, they have a card on the actual uh, table, which is the two of hearts, not the card that they named. Uh, all I'm doing is I'm going through the deck in this case. So I'm going through the cards like this. I'm finding whatever card they named. Let's say it happens to be the four of hearts and I'm cutting that card directly to the top of the deck. That's it. So that's all I'm doing. I'm just literally cutting that card to the deck. And at this point, I could just top change it for this card. I could simply do a double lift as I uh, call attention to the fact that this card's been on the table the entire time. They could have thought of any card. That's the way I cover the actual cut. And in this case, I could just simply do a, a top change or a double lift to show the appropriate card. Now, if you want and it fits your personality, you could actually show the incorrect card, build it up on the offbeat, do a top change, Put that card back on the spot and say, what was the card you thought of? Wait, I uh, use the four of hearts. Okay, let me see if I could find that with a cut. And at this point, you could do whatever fancy false cut you want and find the same card twice. In this case, you're finding the wrong card twice. You go, wait, two of hearts. That's the card I thought you picked. What's the card you picked? Oh, the four of hearts. Why don't you check your hand? And it happens to be the four of hearts. Now, outs are going to depend entirely on your skill level. When you are starting off in magic, the first outs you're going to have are very, very limited. The more you learn, the more techniques. And uh, as you grow in magic, you're going to find that you're going to have more ways to uh, go out. So you're going to be able to incorporate a spread core. You're going to be able to incorporate different controls, different ways, maybe card to pocket, different things that you could do. But that's going to depend entirely on your skill set. This is just a very rudimentary way to uh, get an out or get an effect after you uh, incorrectly guess the card that they're thinking of. Always think of the effect here. But unfortunately, if you happen to miss, then the effect has to be a little bit 
pliable and a little bit of malleable because uh, you kind of have to still come to a successful conclusion. So that is just uh, the thought force, if you want to call it that, a spread force, a psychological force, whatever it is you want to call it. Uh, some outs, again, my take on the verbiage that you want to use, which is the most important aspect of it. But uh, do keep in mind, again, this is entirely dependent on your skill level. This is uh, entirely dependent on you and how it is that uh, you speak. And don't just take what I say. It's going to take a little while for you to develop your own natural language. But once you do, you're going to find a very, very solid force in this. So thank you guys for being members of the Academy. Thank you guys again for your continual support. And I hope to see you on the next lesson.